Let's learn how to think like a scientist. To think like a scientist, the first thing that you need is curiosity or wonder. You should be curious about something that you want to find out. That curiosity question is called a hypothesis. After you have formulated a hypothesis, you then have to define a procedure of an experiment that you will conduct to either prove or disprove your hypothesis or to find answer to the question that you wanted to know. Then you have to make a prediction. A prediction about what do you think will happen because then based on the experiment later we will see whether that prediction is true or not. After making the prediction you will conduct the experiment based on the procedure you had defined and you will note down the outcome of your experiment. Finally, you will draw a conclusion or an inference about what is it that you discovered. Here you will find an answer to your question, you will say whether your hypothesis was correct or not and you will look at all the predictions you had made. Let's apply this in one experiment. I wonder how much light passes through objects. That is, I want to learn about what is transparency, translucency and opaqueness of objects. So the question is, I want to take some objects and I want to figure out how much light passes through these different objects. With this curiosity question, the experiment that we can design is, first we will find out different types of objects, things lying around uh, in our house or in the school. Then we will open the science journal app and go to the light sensor. We will measure the normal light falling on the light sensor because this will provide the base against which we will compare other readings. Then we will place the first object on the light sensor and take a reading. And we will repeat this for the other objects that is place them on the sensor and take more readings. But what we will have to be careful about here is that the light falling on the sensor does not change. So for example, if we are doing it in sunlight, we should, we'll have to be careful that when we are taking new readings with new objects, the base light has not changed because if it changes, for example, it becomes cloudy, then the experiment will not be a fair experiment. Having defined the procedure, let's try to make some predictions. What is it that we think will happen in this experiment? The first prediction I'm making is, I think the light sensor reading will be zero for opaque objects because opaque objects don't let any light pass through. My second prediction is that the light sensor reading will be less than normal for translucent objects. And finally, light sensor reading will be same as normal for the transparent objects. So now that we've defined all these parameters, let's conduct an experiment. Now that our document is ready, the next step is to find some objects. So some objects that I have gathered are, here is a, a plastic glass and we can test how much light passes through this. I also have this plastic container, which is a little different kind of a plastic than this glass. We can also test this one. Then I have another type of plasticky container and we can test this one. Then we'll also test this tissue paper. We can test regular paper from a notebook. We can test this cardboard. And for some fun, we can test this mesh kind of a thing and see whether this is transparent, translucent or opaque. With our objects ready, let us open Science Journal app. So I'm in the Science Journal app and I'm continuing without signing in. I'm going to start a new experiment. And I am going to go to sensors and to the light sensor. So in this tablet, the light sensor is right now reading 3000 lux. And the light sensor on this machine is, here, is somewhere here. And if I take this tissue paper, for example, and I cover it, then you can see that immediately the reading has come down. So what we are going to do is we are going to use this light sensor uh, to test how much light passes through different objects. 
So the first thing you can do is give a title to your experiment. So I'm calling it testing transparency. You can give your experiment any appropriate title. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to record the normal reading. So the normal reading right now based on the sunlight that is falling on the sensor is 3000 lux. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this recording. So if I click this uh, box here, I can say that this is the normal reading. We should give a heading because later on it will be very difficult to figure out which reading was for which object. So having done that, now we can take the first reading and let's say the first reading that we want to do is with, with a plastic glass. So I get a plastic glass and I cover the sensor with the plastic glass and the reading is the same 3000 lux which means that all the light is passing through this glass. So I can take a reading and again I'm just taking a screenshot and I'm clicking this box and I'm going to give it a title and I'm going to say plastic glass and save it and now I'm going to do the same for all the other objects. So the next object that I have is the plastic box and I put this box on top of the sensor. The reading is not changing so even this box is although it appears to be translucent but I guess the uh, the sensor is still getting the same amount of light as before. So I'm going to take this reading Now we will test this next object and here you can see that the reading has gone down quite a bit from 3000 lux to around 560 lux. So with this I am going to take another reading. The next thing we are going to test is this tissue paper. So the next reading that we are going to take is with the notebook paper and again I am ensuring that the light falling on the sensor the source light has not gone down because if it's cloudy outside and this goes down then the experiment will not be a fair test. So this is same 3k lux so I am now going to place this paper on the sensor. Next, I'm going to test this cardboard and the reading has gone down to almost 0 lux like you know it's 70, 80 lux here because some of the light may be seeping in but I'm going to take this reading which means that this cardboard is, is opaque. Next, we have this mesh kind of a thing and this should be interesting because let's see how much light the mesh passes because as you can see from the screen I can see a little bit of the screen so again I'm going to first make sure it's 3k lux and then I'm going to bring this mesh on top of the sensor and I'm getting a reading of around 420 odd lux. For the fun of it let's also see whether human, we humans, are we transparent, translucent or opaque? I can test that by using my hand. So right now again the normal reading is 3k lux and I can take my hand and that shows that I am or we humans are definitely opaque. So I'm going to take a screenshot. So now as you can see we have got all these readings on how much light passes through different objects and we can now look at the results and draw some inferences. So these are the values that we have got for the different objects. Let's take these values and put them in the document that we have. So here in the result and outcome column, I'm going to note down the readings that we just got for different objects. 
So this is the light sensor reading in descending order. So the normal was 3000 for the plastic glass and plastic box. It was the same. And then the other readings for the other objects are all here. Based on these readings, what kind of conclusion or inference can we draw? That is, what is it that we discovered? So for this, first, let's go back to the question that we had formulated, which was how much light passes through different types of objects. And we have an answer for this in the observations that we have made. Based on the result of our experiment, here are some conclusions or inferences that I have drawn. First is that plastic is transparent and lets all the light pass through, which is evident here because the normal sensor reading was 3000 and with the plastic glass and plastic box, at least the materials that we used, there was no change in this reading. The second inference is that notebook paper and tissue paper are translucent and they let some light pass through. And the last inference is that cardboard and my hand are opaque and they don't let any light pass through. So those are the conclusions that I have drawn. Let's look at our prediction. One of our predictions was that the light sensor reading will be same as normal for transparent objects. And this is true because for uh, plastic, which we are saying is transparent, there was no change in, in the reading. Then the second prediction we had made was that light sensor reading will be less than normal for translucent objects. And this is also true as we can see here for notebook paper, the pouch and tissue paper, the, the reading came down. And the third prediction that we had made was that the light sensor reading will be zero for opaque objects. Now this is slightly not the case for us because cardboard and hand and my hand we are saying are opaque, but the sensor did read some value here. This I think we can say is an experimental error because maybe that's because of the way the sensor works in a smartphone or maybe some light seeped through. Anyway, it, it is not that your predictions have to come true. What is important in a scientific investigation is that whatever is your hypothesis based on your experiment and your observation, you have to say that was your hypothesis true or false. That is what a scientific investigation is all about. I hope you've learned something about thinking like a scientist and how to conduct a scientific investigation. And these days, there are so many free apps like the Google Science Journal that you can use to make learning science fun for yourself.